What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have an Autolite 4100 carburetor off that 1959 Ford Thunderbird that I got running in a previous video. Definitely a runner. If you didn't see the video, check it out. It'll be linked down below. This is going to be a video for a two-part series. I'm trying to keep things short and sweet for your viewing pleasure. I want to say real quick before you even start, when you take apart your carburetor, make sure you organize your parts so this way you don't lose track of the way they go. Try to work neat so this way you don't lose any parts. Um, some of these parts are very hard to come by if you can find them. So with that being said, let's get started. I went on Rock Auto and I purchased this carburetor uh, rebuild kit, part number 15255. I'm going to put it in the description down below. I'm going to link it down below. Um, the carburetor rebuild kit does not come with the secondary accelerator pump. I'm not really sure if I'm going to need a secondary accelerator pump, but if I'm going to re be re replacing everything, I might as well just replace this for, I think it was like another $10 or something like that. Well worth it. Get it over with. All new parts. Jingle bingle. Chris Kringle, if you know what I'm saying. All right. Put the carburetor kit off to the side and let's begin. Okay, so in order to take this apart, it's going to be a threaded rod down in here. You're going to want to unscrew that, take that out first. Mine is missing, so I'm going to be, one of, I'm going to be looking for that in the trunk, that's, that's for sure. So first, you're going to want to remove the choke. Three slotted head screws. Take those three out. Looking in here, I see some, some crud built up in, in the bottom here. Some nasty stuff. So we're going to take this off. This is going to end up going in the in the bath as well. And so inside the cap here is a spring that hooks up to this little flapper. And when the heat comes in from the exhaust, when it starts to warm up, it makes the spring expand. Like, you know, heat makes metal expand. Duh. Basically, it leans. It starts adding more air to the carburetor, leaning out the, the mixture. All right, so let's finish taking off the thingy thinger. Keep very close attention to the bolts as they come out because they're all different sizes. But I mean, it's pretty. It looks like it's pretty self-explanatory where they go so far, thus far. There's a little flex pin over here. You got to pull out, holding the linkage together. Holding the linkage to the choke assembly. Pull the pin out, put it in a safe place. Gasket. I'm not sure if this is in the kit, so don't root destroy it. Okay, you're gonna to want to pop off this one this one C clip to where the linkage is here, connected here, and then just and then just pop that straight down. And there's your choke assembly. Yeah, the secondary accelerator. My accelerator pump, the secondary is is frozen from what I'm seeing. I see some debris down in the in the bottom of this this carburetor as it is. I've seen some I've seen some evidence of the mice is running around on top. So I'm sure there's some nice presence down inside there. Always save your gaskets so you can compare them to the new gaskets. Very important. Be very careful when disassembling this carburetor so you could save your gaskets. Also we're going to be taking off the fast idle cam. I'm going to get this all basically cleaned up as nice as we can get it. It's another e-clip and it's pretty gummy on there so take that off so everything's going to flow and it's going to, it's going to run like a like a champ. So now we're going to remove the top of the carburetor and from what I'm seeing it's it looks like it's eight screws to remove it um, I only have seven. Was I have one missing? I'll have to see if I can locate myself one. All right, I'm going to take the top screws out. Like I said, try to keep your bolts in order. See what kind of shape the inside of this is. 
There's your top, top of the carb. Put this off to the side. Oof, that is nasty in there. Oof. Stinky too. <laughs> Here's the one gasket came off in one piece. Nice. Oof, that reeks. That shit, that shit is Ricky Ricardo, man. Woo! P U. There's literal cobwebs in here. Cobwebs. Spiders are making homes inside inside my carburetor. Before I go any deeper, I want to take off the rest of the throttle linkage. Because there's just basically there's just a little cotter pin. Mr. Cotter! Mr. Cotter. Basically you do like a 180 with, with linkage and it pops right off. So now we're going to remove the Venturas. Alrighty then. The Venturis. This is the primary Venturis and this is the secondary Venturis. I can't express enough how stinky this carburetor is. Pew! What the hell is that smell? Right, when taking the Venturis out, just keep note that the screw holding the Venturis in needs to be cleaned as well. There's, there's holes for the fuel to come up through. Basically goes in to the bottom and out. That's where the gas comes up and shoots into the carburetor. So you got to make sure that this is clean just as well as everything else. Keep note. And there is also there is a check ball below that screw. So be very careful with that check ball because you're not, you're not going to want to lose it. You're going to at least need it to compare the difference in sizes. All right, let's take out the secondaries. That one's just basically a screw, but it does also have a, a gasket around it. Oop, broke the gasket. Um... Pretty nasty. Oof. Like teeth marks in the metal. Something was chewing on this, I think. Off camera, I was messing with the secondaries butterflies, and a bunch of stuff came out the bottom. Some mouse house and some corn, some deer corn. You're gonna want, oh, you're gonna want to pop your spring, your spring retainers. And once you pop the spring retainers, the float should just lift right out. This was the secondary. I'm going to check that for holes later on. Wow! What a hole! There's dead flies in here. And a bunch of different exciting nasty stuff. Let's do the other one as well. Retaining spring and float. Okay, that is this some nasty, some nasty debris at the bottom of this carburetor, that's for sure. I did not forget about the check ball, it's still in there. Uh, before I go turning over the carburetor in my hand, I want to make sure all this old fuel is dried up. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take care of that right now. It doesn't have to be perfect, I just don't want fuel dripping all over my room, my basement. There's a fly. We'll put it with the cracked corn. Look at this pile of crap right here. Dead flies, deer corn, just nastiness. All right, let's check out the accelerator pump suit. I mean, it feels springy, but we'll see what kind of condition it's in. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't really work. I haven't really worked much in my life on with carburetors. This is my first full-size engine that I've messed with carburetors. I've worked. I've worked a lot with a lot of small engine carburetors, Bakunis and Kalheins, whatever you call them, and a lot of the Honda clones. But but definitely a four-barrel carburetor. That's for sure. But pretty sure we'll we'll be alright over here figuring it out. 
Okay. Hey, yeah, the accelerator pump. I mean, it's not ripped, but, it, but it's very crunchy. Very stiff. That's what she said. <laughs> There's a spring for the accelerator pump. And the accelerator pump. Yep. And all the screws. Well, paying very close attention to where all my parts and my bolts are laid out. Um, what I'm going to do is before I put anything, before I dip anything in the parts washer, I'm going to take pictures of where everything lays out, knowing where all the bolts go to whatever units they're connected to. Goes. I'm trying to break it loose from the whatever the crust that was in there. All right, let's take out the power valve. Try to be careful with your with your gaskets. Now, now we'll take out the idle mixture screws. One, two, one half, two, say two and a half. That one was two and a half turns out. Half. This one was only one turn out. Okay. All right, now let's get a wrench and we'll... We'll take off, we'll take that off. Don't do like me guys, get the right tool, it's one inch wrench. That's pretty so nasty in there as well. Oh, that's nasty. Oof. Stinky. Let's get off this gasket. I'm very careful not, not to mar the surface. Before I do any more, I, I want to remove this main line. And there should be a screen back behind here. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of rust inside that screen. Yeah, this thing needed it. It definitely needed it, folks. Now we're going to disconnect the secondary diaphragm. I don't think the secondaries were doing much at all when it was running the other day. That's fau shao. Pop! Close the weasel. Let's take off the other cotter pin. Cotter. Pop out the linkage. Also making note that the small linkage is for the secondaries. And then once you take off the link, the linkage, the um, the diaphragm pops out. So now we're going to re remove the seats and the jets. And that right there is plugged solid. Remove the main, the primaries. Primary is pretty clear, but secondaries were solid, lock solid. All right, now we're going to take out the main jets. Those suckers are tight. The one was a little bugger to get out. Bugger. This one's pretty much block solid. Primary. I'd say this one's about maybe one eighth blocked. That's basically it, right? I think that's it. Now it's time to now it's time to soak it in cider. All right, guys, I'm gonna call for this video. I'm trying to keep the videos short and sweet for the viewing pleasure. 
stay tuned for the next video in this series. Um, I'm going to be basically cleaning and rebuilding this carburetor. I'd like to thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on A Patriot's Touch. Have a nice day.